Pamela. Well, Hello. Hi. I, the um, meeting is on recording. I generally always automatically record so that I don't <laughs> um, forget to hit recording. So I can okay. pause it for a minute um, if you would like until the other members come in. Uh, I don't care, but okay. I did ask for a recording earlier and was told that it never got recorded because somebody forgot to press the record button. Right. So I understand. Yeah. It's easy to cut out this beginning part, chit chat, than to not have the whole thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'd rather, I, for me, it's much easier just to uh, have it automatically record. So, um, yeah. And for some reason, I'm going to try again. Rizwana was had right. trouble getting her link. I sent her an attendee link. She's in the attendees, and I am going. Um, so she's rejoining now as a panelist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I sent it to her too, but she doesn't seem to have gotten it. Yeah. Well, I you think know, the that the link, are coming. Yeah. Hey. The link that, that you receive are unique to you. Sometimes if you try to send it to someone else, it won't oh, work. I see. Um, so I sent her the attendee link, which will work for anybody. Okay. I, so I don't know why you, Rizwana, sorry. I don't know why you didn't get the email. Yeah, I'm surprised there was nothing there. The last one, just recently when you sent me the last one, that had the whole um, logistics there. So yeah. um, I was wondering whether I have a firewall or something, but uh, I couldn't see. I was panicking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's likely that I in typing in the um, the email, maybe I missed typed your email address, yeah. and that might have been why you didn't receive it. But no, I got the documents though. I got yeah. the three documents, uh, PDF files, and all that. Yeah, so, so, but I I went back and I couldn't see the Zoom. So that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know that Deb and Joy are definitely coming. Mm -hmm. And um, Jacinta said that if we need a vote, if we don't have a quorum, we can text her and she'll right. come on. Right. Um, because she's studying for exams right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just and I just think Tyler is driving. I haven't heard anything from him. <laughs> he usually does email yeah. me. Okay, so wrap up. And there's Camille. Hello. progress. And there's Deb. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry I didn't come on as a panelist. I didn't actually get that invite, or at least I didn't see it. So you know, so Rizwana had the same issue, but I'm not quite sure why. But Ronnie, yours came in correctly, right? No. Yeah, I did. So. Anyway, good to be here. Hi. Yeah. So I know Joy is coming. It's only 6.29. She's got one yeah. more minute. Yeah. Let's wait. Stop it. My puppy. I'm going to mute. Well, we're at um, 6.31, should we start? Um, 
since we uh, have Camille and then we can, uh, if Joy doesn't come, oh, here she is. Okay, great. Hi. Yeah. Great, great. We're all here. Or at least those who said we're coming are here. Um, since we're already recording, shall I just get started? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so welcome, everyone. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay, it is now 6.32 and I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, so with regard to attendance, Liz Havegood, not here yet. She may come later. Joy, I feel. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute quick enough here. <laughs> okay. Um, Rizwana Khan. Is it, yeah, here. Deborah Colony. Here. Tyler, not here. Ronnie Parker, here. Jacinta Smith, not here. Um, I think that's everyone. So today's agenda, today we have a guest visitor and we'll start with her and then uh, we'll look at our uh, bylaws, et cetera. Not much that's interesting. So are there any, is there any uh, public comment? Is there any public? <laughs> okay. All right, then um, any so, member reports? Sorry. Let me interrupt for just a second. So I've just promoted uh, Liz. Um, so there might must have been something wrong with my Zoom link. link. Um, oh, so okay. she's coming in um, as a panelist. You do have two members of the public, but um, neither raised their hand during the request for public comment. Okay. Um, so let me acknowledge that Liz Haygood is here as well. Um, and then are there any member reports? I will take that to be none. Um, so then let's introduce our very special guest today. Uh, do you want to do that, Pamela? Camille, welcome. Hello. So um, joining us today is Camille Theriak, who is the newly appointed Crest Director, has been on the job for all of five weeks. So, um, uh, and no one is more pleased than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so Camille's just uh, going to join us for a short period because she knows that you have a packed agenda, but um, there was a request for this committee to have her um, come and introduce herself. So I will turn it over to Camille. Hello, how are you? Um, my name is Camille okay. Theriak. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be here. I am now in my fifth week with Amherst and it has been an amazing run already. Um, so much to be done and so much that's already getting done. And um, I look forward to working with you. Oh. Are there any uh, questions, comments from the commission? It's so great. Got... Welcome. So great to have Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if in being on the job for five weeks, if you already have a sense of your priorities for the next few months? Yes, I do. So right now the priorities are getting my team up to speed and uh, getting SOPs and working, well, standard operating procedures, um, working with APD and fire and figuring out um, where we fit in in this vast gray area. Um, we have the budget meeting on Friday already. So um, that's interesting. And there's a lot that is to be done. And 
Pamela has helped, oh, incredibly, um, getting me onboarded and I have an amazing team. So I just want to make sure that, you know, the C for community is really stressed upon for everyone. Any others? So, Camille, we didn't know you were coming till the last minute, but I know I have lots of questions and thoughts for you, but mostly I'm really impressed by your background and so, so glad you're here and have great hopes. And thank you, thank you. for coming to the commission to introduce well, I, yourself. I welcome your questions um, at any time and I'm all up for in-person meetings and I'm really trying to get a sense from the community what it is that Crest can do for the community and what I can do in particular to make this process mm -hmm. go smoothly. I know I will come and talk with you soon and I encourage everyone else on the commission to do so as well. Please do. In the future. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Hi, Camille. You so uh, Go ahead. Okay. One yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome uh, to the community in town of Amherst. And we were really looking forward to it now that we have the chief here also. And it was, uh, I met him and, and we, we were really happy about that uh, leadership that you're going to provide us with. And all the good things you have already started. I noticed that you start assigned um, um, roles to everybody. I saw that flyer, beautifully done flyer at middle school. So I'm really happy with that because uh, we are a very small community and we need people like you to give us direction and protection also while we are at it. So welcome aboard. Thank, thank you me. very much. Great. So thank you. Would thank you. you. Would you Welcome to stay for the bylaws discussion if you'd like. Um, absolutely. I think I'm going to listen in. Okay, great. Um, all right. Yeah, so the, next thing, the next thing again is the bylaws. And I have an approach to it that will help us bring it to closure if we can. The bylaws are in three parts. And so I want to take one part at a time. The first part has to do with just the introduction and definitions and accept or not, I can project it on the screen. The second part has to do with our duties. And the third part has to do with procedures in the event of a complaint. So when I looked at it after last time's discussion, I feel like if we look at each part and make a proposal to approve, we can get it done because it's a big document. So I'm going to, can I share screen? You should have just received an invitation to be co-host, and that will allow you to share screen. Okay. Um, yeah. So I just have to find my document. I think that must be it. Yeah. Okay. So this is the draft. What you're looking at is the draft of what we saw before. And there's the beginning. Um, so this part has the purpose, it has the definitions. That's pretty much it. And in here, what we said in our discussion, this is just the last version we could find, to be honest. Um, what we said in our discussion was that we wanted town manager and town council to be reversed. And we said that the mission should go in there before the purpose statement. And then the rest of it, we said, was fine. So with these changes, I'm going to propose that we vote to approve part one with these changes of the bylaws. So I need a second. I second. Thank you. So I'm going to call by name and then just say yes or no. So I'll start with Liz Haywood. Hey, good. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that again. I'm so sorry. Liz Haygood? Yes. Thank you. Joy? Yes. Liz Wanatan? Yes. yes. Debra? Yes. Tyler is absent. Ronnie Parker? Yes. Jacinta is absent. 
So I believe we have the vote on that. We needed four, we have five. So let's move to the next section. This part is more direct, most directly related to our functions. It's called duties and it's got a bunch of stuff in there. But the parts that we questioned of it, having read it last time, was just this part that says provide an annual report to the town manager, whereas previously it said to the town council. So this recommendation was to put it back to town council. And I went and read the, uh, if you read the mission statement, you'll see that everywhere it refers to town council, town manager, human rights director in that order. So. I think it's sort of a big step. So I think we discussed this already. We said, we will provide our report to the town council. We can say the town manager will receive it also, of course, but it will be addressed to the town council. That's the only change really in the duties. Um, we talked about which should go first, next, whatever, but I'm trying to keep it simple. This is the only thing I thought was really meaningful. So I'm going to propose again that we accept the bylaws duties section, which has a total of nine duties with this one change that our annual report would go to the town council, not the town manager. I need a second, please. I second it. Thank you, Rizwana. So mm -hmm. I will call again, but I'll change the order of the call. This time, um, I'll go bottom up. So just uh, before you do that, before you do that, I have a yeah. question. Yes. Because right above it, it says serves as a recess to the town manager, town council. So right above that, it's reversed again. Yeah. So that's a little confusing unless yeah. we switch both. But I would switch this one too and put it here because it's consistent with the documents that are already on the website and because really the town, this is how I see it. The town manager is responsible for the operations of the town. We are not. We have very little to do with operations except through the DEI office, the human rights director who actually does investigations and so on. And she reports to the town manager. So we have sort of a line to the town manager, but really the level at which we function is more connected in my mind to the policies of the town. So, but I also think that it makes more sense to go from town council in my view. So I would change that. I was just trying to limit the changes to be more strategic, but I agree with you. I think number three should be town council, town manager and human rights director. Everywhere else, that's the order it's in. So, so at this point, if that's the case, there needs to be a separate, um, we have to yes. vote on the motion and I would vote that one down, but then make a separate motion to yes. approve with that necessary change. Yes. So I move to vote on the original motion so we can vote it, vote it down and move on. Um, second? I second. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go up again from the bottom up the way I was going. So just since as absent, Ronnie Parker next, I vote no to that motion. Um, Tyler is absent, Deborah. Uh, yes to the combined, that's what we're doing. We here. haven't made the combined. What we no. have to do is- We're still on the-, no, on the yeah, yeah, you have to say no to the old before we can move to the new. I say no to the old. Okay, Rizwana. <laughs> um, no. Okay. Joy? Say no. No, no. right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tell Liz? Say. I say no. Okay. So somebody else make, maybe Liz, you can make the motion. I make a motion okay. that we approve this part of our um, document with the necessary corrections. Okay. As uh, article whatever the article is, part three. There's no, it's just called um, duty section. Duties, part okay. three. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. And I'm going to call again from the middle now um, if, to sit, say whether you're in favor or not. I'll start with Rizwana. Yes, I favor. Yeah. Deborah. 
Yes. Tyler is absent. Rani, yes. Jacinta is absent. Liz? Yes. Joy? Yes. Okay, motion is passed. Let's go to the final part. This whole section has to do with um, what happens if there's a complaint? What are the resolution uh, procedures? And um, from our discussion last time, there were no real issues with this. This was worked and reworked a million times over the last year. But so I'm gonna just make a move to just accept section three, the resolution procedures as they are. Second. Second. Okay. Um, let's take a vote then. And I'll start at yet another place. Deborah. Yes. Tyler is absent. Rani, yes. Jacinta is absent. Liv? Yes. Joy? Yes. Rizwana? Yes. Yay. So we have unanimously passed bylaws for the Human Rights Finally. Commission. Congratulations, However, everyone. They still have to be approved by the town council and the town manager. That's their business. Yes, so you know, it's all their business. Yeah. yeah. We have gotten it out the door. True. So congratulations, mm -hmm. everyone. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's move on then with the agenda. Um, we have uh, proposals from um, Rizwana and also from Deborah. Um, about this has to do with our work in the future, how we work. Um, let me close this so that it's not yeah. bothering anyone. Okay. Okay. Now we can see each other. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so who would like, well, I think who would like to go first? I'll let you decide. Who's feeling ready to talk about? Your Are we um, skipping over the DEI Crest update, or did we already do that? Because I oh, think there was I more. It was... Is there more? I think we do <laughs> need an update because actually there has been more going on. Um, so uh, I think you, I think that you can take uh, Camille's remarks as the Cress update. Um, mm -hmm. I can just flesh out a little bit more that there are currently two of the responders are in a three, well, they'll be completing tomorrow a three-day training program on crisis intervention. Um, so, you know, the the department as a whole has been without those two responders for the, for Tuesday, Wednesday, and tomorrow for three days. Um, uh, Camille mentioned that the, uh, the Crest Department will have its budgetary um, hearing with the finance committee on Friday. Um, each department has generally been uh, slotted an hour to be with the finance committee. Some take more or less time. I had my meeting with them last Friday. I think I had all of like 15 minutes. So um, uh, she, I know, has received a number of questions um, that they've asked her to elaborate on. Um, so she and Kat uh, Newman are preparing for those questions and for a conversation with the with the um, with the finance committee. Um, uh, those are the big things that I'm aware of. I'm not. I don't know a lot of the. Um, of the day to day uh, operations because I've been really trying to let this be Camille's show, right? So she's in charge and um, and I've been trying to honor that. But I, I you know, from conversation with her, um, I do know about those activities. Uh, the other thing that I can say about Cress is that they have um, been very supportive and have really uh, uh, let a lot of assistance to me um, as I try to prepare for the remaining four events that the DEI office and the HRC commission have between now and June 15th. So, um, and they've been really helpful in volunteering. Well, and 
and providing time. Camille has had to approve overtime for them to to assist with those activities. Um, so that that's uh, something that they've been uh, involved in. On the uh, DEI side, I will say that I have a staff workshop coming up on Friday. Um, the department does a monthly staff uh, DEI workshop on various topics. Um, the topic that's on Friday is on um, a bystander awareness and be, being a better ally. These events are open only to staff because we want to create a space where staff feel that they can learn without and you know be vulnerable without being judged by the members of the public. So they're staff only events. Um, the DEI department did a Becoming Beloved community event uh, on May 2nd. That was, I think, well attended and um, went uh, well. I have sent out a survey for feedback, but to be honest with you, I've been um, going at full throttle and I haven't even looked to see if anyone has responded to the survey. I just, there's so many different balls that I'm trying to juggle at this point. Um, the next, community event will be in July. Um, it should have, you know, if we kept to the every other month schedule, it would have occurred in June, but June is already so packed with events. There's no, um, there's just no way to do a June event. Um, and I think the other things that you probably would be curious to know is that um, the assistant DEI director position has been posted. It was posted on Monday, um, and we already have seven applicants for that position. The um, charter dictates that the position be posted for a two-week period, and I was informed by HR that I, um, I'm not to contact uh, candidates or applicants until that two-week period has um, expired. That will happen on the 27th, um, the day after Memorial Day. Um, the goal will be to have, to move this pretty quickly and to have um, in-person interviews for the first round so that I'm, I'm thinking by the end of the two week period, we should have a fairly robust applicant pool. We have a pretty robust applicant pool now at seven applicants after only being posted for the, um, for the three days. So I think that will go fairly quickly. Um, and all of the other DEI activities are in just preparing to support the various events. So I can spend a little bit of time. Um, yep, Liz? No, keep, I'm just, I'll wait for you to finish. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm gonna go through um, just the events. So, we have uh, a separate the, line for the events. It's another agenda item. Okay. Do, all right. Would you prefer me to wait? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Liz? So, um, two questions, and I think maybe this even might be for Camille or you. I don't remember. Um, and I should have brought it up when it came up to um, uh, uh, questions. But I was on the committee for the police chief search. I know that um, Mr. Ting was moved forward. Has that been resolved? Oh, yes. His appointment was announced. Okay. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been around. You know me. I go <laughs> yeah, right. the country. Yeah. So, yeah. So, he that uh, appointment was announced in, um, I'm going to say it's been at least a week. But, yeah, that, that's been resolved and he was um, appointed as the Chief of the Police Department. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there was one other thing that I was going to ask, and my brain went south. So, um, if it comes up, I'll do it in other topics, I guess. All righty. Okay. All right. So, are you okay waiting, Pamela? Because oh yes, I'm, oh, I'm different. I know what else I want to say. I would love to be on that that commit that that in, that committee as well for Which, the, the assistant director position. Oh, uh, on the uh, search for this assistant director position? Yes. Okay. Um, I, uh, I will um, have a conversation. The goal was to have a pretty 
type uh, committee. It, right now it's a committee of three. It's myself, Kiko Mallon, who's the director of the um, okay. health department and Mike Warner from IT. But okay. you're welcome to join us. Um, I'll, I'll have to. Of course, I have to see the dates because, you know. Right. That, there that's, you go again. Yeah. So I can tell you now that the target dates for interviews are the 30th and 31st of May. It's the Thursday and Friday following our first opportunity to contact applicants. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll be in touch. Okay. All right, so I know we've put off discussions of these topics for quite some time, so I'm eager to get to it and make sure we give some time uh, to our work. So, Deborah and Rizwana, do you have a preference? Is one of you ready to go, Deborah? I'm not really I know you sure. wrote up something already, but your head has been somewhere else. So. Um I actually presented it at our last meeting, and so I have no, I don't really know where to go with it at this point. Um, we left off, we had a little bit of a discussion, um, Jacinta had some questions, and yeah, so I could repeat what I did, but I'm not, I, hmm, I could use some help, and I'd be thrilled if, Riz, if Rizwana wanted to present her proposals. Okay, so my proposal are basically I had broached them last time also. Are the, those the ones? I don't know. Uh, but last time I mentioned about um, yeah, I'm, last time I mentioned about how how we were left out of the loop because um, it was very disturbing when uh, we found out uh, it was a very public thing when the grants. It's an old story now. It's been two months now. The grants were given out. And then there was a case also on the basis of DEI um, done by a business per, a businessman, a uh, business uh, place. And that was resolved, I think. But uh, the fact that considering we are the committee, we should be given some kind of a leeway as to what's going on. So, because everything that has happened, we have no idea what's going on, you know, seriously. And also, uh, and it's not that I feel anything a uh, lot that we should be included and, and everybody's is prerogative to keep it very uh, down, but somehow it comes out in the news, in the Gazette, it comes out um, way of first, and then second, it comes out in uh, Amherst Indy. That's the local online uh, newspaper, newspaper also. And everything has to do with DEI issues and human rights uh, issue and so on. And also in our in our human rights committee that we are attending, we are basically doing the bylaws and we are working on uh, setting up some kind of guidelines the whole time. We haven't really enacted any uh, um, case, you know, basically we haven't done <laughs> so and i have to say that deborah uh, was the one who actually did come up with that uh, very proactive uh, survey and i my hats to you deborah because that was proactive and that you know the, that showed me and i met with this very young activist also from high high school now i am bringing that person also in he there's a sunrise club and now he, I met, if you remember, Deborah, we met him at your, when you were at the town hall and I was really impressed. He was so young and he knew all the logistics and the numbers of everything on his finger point uh, tips because of the fact they've been working on it. And then I again met him at the rally. And then now again in the newspaper, there's a whole big article about the budget. All right. And two million dollars, uh, not countable for uh, uh, they are counted, but they have been repeated. So there has been a mistake, as per se. So who brought that up? The Sunrise Club from high school. <laughs> so it's like I was at that moment when I read. It's a whole article that came out just a week ago, and it, and it, the budget was passed uh, in the beginning of the year. 
So uh, then, then I talked to a counselor and she said, no, it has been rectified. It, it was a, it was a mistake. And the, but these things, uh, we want to be proactively involved in something where we can make a difference, like a sunrise club. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, but I, I hope you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say, because the whole time we are just working on these guidelines and how to, and these guidelines and the mission, mission is, the mission is the work and there are a lot of housing problems going on. There are so many things that are going on right now, presently. This is the time when things are really not, not good things are happening. So we should do, and the good thing is that DEI and uh, with Pamela, uh, Pamela has done a really good job of facilitation. That was really proactive. So I think, uh, and uh, the other thing is I'm just jumbling up. The feedback, I saw the feedback. Well, it was really good, but as you say that uh, it was um, very difficult to get the feedback uh, together and then uh, be accountable for that because it was a very long one, you know, because there was a lot of writing involved in the feedback. So uh, so that's another thing because it ha everything has to be brief and the food is always good. <laughs> okay, thank you. So... If anybody wants to join in or something. I just I just wanted to be clear about what you said. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you were talking about complaints, human rights issues and complaints that you're reading about in the press and elsewhere and feel like we should know more about. And the second one is seem to be more general, that there are lots of people engaged in the community and maybe you'd like us to see more engaged as well, rather than sitting and discussing bylaws. Is that sort of is that correct? Yeah, basically that sums it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then let's take the first one first because we talked about um, we've talked quite a excuse me quite a bit about the complaints and us not knowing. And I'm I'm gonna ask uh, Pamela and Liz especially also to join in on this because I think there is an issue about. Uh, confidentiality, but we also want to know there's been a complaint, if there's been a complaint, um, so that we're not totally surprised when somebody else talks to us about it. Yeah. Um, so, Ms. So, the go. question is, when are we informed about complaints? And that's why we have the DEI Crest Report, is because that's when we're in, we are informed. If in fact we are informed as a committee, then we would be in violation of open meeting laws because, so that's why sometimes things have moved forward. We only meet once a month. Something could come in tomorrow that gets resolved next week, but then we don't meet again until the third Wednesday in, in June and get that report. That is one of the reasons why Riswana that sometimes we're behind the eight ball when there is a complaint. And so we're, we're between a rock and a hard place as far as notification, because we can't notify the committee without violating um, the rules for open meeting. Now, there are times that uh, Ronnie and I as co-chairs will find out something um, and that is not in violation because we are not voting on anything. We're not informing the entire committee and we're not violating open meeting laws. So we need to be careful in that respect and trust that um, what is being printed or what people are saying is being handled by um, the folks that are doing the investigation for and we'll have an opportunity to weigh in or be informed at our next meeting. So unfortunately, that's yeah. a truth. Yeah. Now that you're mentioning it, it's a very really good thing that we brought it up uh, because uh, of the fact, this uh, technical thing that you, uh, you and Rani both can uh, discuss it and you can be the 
uh, people who are you know cheering you are the leaders in our community so if you have uh, you can discuss it or if you are uh, informed about something then you, you do not need to tell us we can just have some kind of a momentum or some kind of a negotiations kind of a some kind of a thing and the second thing is what if you we involve the gazette or newspapers in our loop and uh, and so that you can, whenever uh, things go murky or something happens, you both can say a statement from the town. Might be, you know, we are getting a bad rap because of all the one-sided things that are happening. And uh, and as personally, I think that it's my subjective opinion that a middle school situation was just too much. It was it was not supposed to go to that next level. People are not as they are, you know, they've been painted so bad, but it wasn't supposed to be like that. So this shouldn't have happened. And it lasted for more than a year and still the fallback is there. So, you know, these things, I am afraid we should not uh, see that happen again. So if we uh, somehow connect with the media and uh, you both, uh, uh, whoever is a uh, next chairperson, we have something where we can, you can st say a statement or something to mollify these things. So I'm going to yeah. let Pamela handle that one because again, I think that's, I, I, that's not our charge. So right. I'll let Pamela respond. Right. So um, the first thing I want to point out is that your new procedures, once they are adopted, will provide you with an avenue as a committee for learning about uh, about incidents because people will have two options, right? They'll have the option of filing a formal complaint, which they have to you know, provide their name and information, and that would be very public, or to come before this board informally so that there are two options. And I, um, what has occurred in town in the past was uh, really more practice. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, it was a, a way in which complaints were handled that tried to adhere or provide some confidentiality. But you will have a procedure in place and it will be incumbent upon us as a group to ad adhere to that procedure. Um, the um, town staff and employees, um, are very limited in what communication they can have outside, um, like, you know, with the press. It is, the, the town does not have a communication manager now that's an open position, but generally the policy and the rule is that if there are questions that come from the press, they are directed to the town manager's office, and then the town manager would authorize a department head to have conversation with a member of the press or, or set, um, establish that. Um, so I think uh, that I would be less concerned about the body as a whole responding to what is perceived to be, you know, misinformation or mischaracterization in the press. And it would probably be more appropriate for you as an individual, if you so choose, to respond, to respond, you know, if you wanted to write in your own personal opinion. There have been times when when other boards have um, provided a response to the town council and they have shared that response with the press. So that's an option. I think the the. CSSJC on a regular basis might draft a letter or communication that they are going to send to the town manager and to the town council, and then they will also direct that um, um, communication to the press. That's probably another appropriate way of of making the point to the press. But I'm um, but I'm not aware of any board that sends communication to the press independent of it going to the town manager and town council. Thank you. Um, that definitely makes sense. And that's a very good option. And 
Uh, because of the fact we do not have any council, town council liaison with us right now also, even though they had said they will show up. So this communication in a letter will be not a bad idea eventually, uh, when everything is set up and we have things in place and so on. So that would be a good venue to uh, to show uh, the town manager and further on the town council as to our um, complaints or our uh, strategies mm -hmm. at, uh, and dealing with that. Yeah. So one final point, which is that I know that it may seem frustrating um, to have um, to have spent a lot of time on the bylaws, but this is actually very important work, I would argue, and significant. Um, it's um, because you are setting the stage for the future work of the commission, and um, and that has you know it has merit. It's certainly worthwhile. Um, and now that now that you've accomplished it, you know, in the fall, um, I think that one of the things that I think this commission does beautifully is set aside time to have a retreat to make a decision about what your priorities are. And um, when you know, if you choose to do that in the fall with that off your plate, you can then set your agenda items on other things. Yeah. But yeah. completing that is a major accomplishment. Okay. I, I would definitely okay. agree that having the bylaws in place this time when we do the next retreat, we can actually have an action plan for the next year that is more directly tied to the work of the commission. I have to say, because I've spoken about this before as well, that I really feel like there does need to be more engagement of the whole commission, not just the co-chairs, and that there does need to be notification when there's been a complaint. Just It could just be as simple as there has been a complaint. And in the human rights report, which will come out in the next month or two, um, we will say we've had, like we said last year, we had seven complaints and we had two sentences about each complaint. So I think it's important to be aware that these complaints exist so that those who want to bring something forward are able to bring it forward. But I. I also personally acknowledge how very, very difficult it is to come forward about this kind of thing to a committee, regardless of all the confidentialities that are assured. And so I think we really have to, um, we have to show the highest level of respect for the people who are bold and brave enough to come forward, but also note how many there are, because that does tell the next person, look, they did it. You know, I don't know who that is, but they did it. So if I'm really upset if something bad happens to me, I have some place to go. If somebody will hear me. It's not the police. Um, it's not anybody that will bring down the force of law, but it will help me to give voice to what I'm feeling and somebody to hear, to listen to me. And I think Deborah's proposal is really strategic. I'm not talking about the survey she did for the town, but the proposal to the Human Rights Commission to get sort of a broad-based understanding of what kinds of violations are happening here and where are they happening and who's causing these violations. So I'm sorry to have lectured, but I'll stop there. Is that, do you feel like you've had your say or do you feel like some follow-up is needed, Raswana? I think it's, uh, no, I think uh, uh, you all really helped me understand the situation. And I'm very excited about the retreat also, uh, you know, in September, because that's when we'll start creating some new uh, strategies as to how to uh, engage with the uh, with the community. So that'll be positive because, and thank you for that bylaw, you know, it is a legacy and the, the fact everybody worked so hard on it. So no, no, it definitely it's clarified. Thank you so much. Um, Joy, did you have anything to add to the discussion? Okay, thank you. Um, Deborah, do you have a sort of next steps for your proposal or? Well, it again, it wasn't clear to me after the conversation last month, what, where we collectively would go as a next step. So where are we to vote on it? I mean, it's had its conversation. Uh, I don't even remember who was in attendance at the last meeting, except I know that Tyler and Jacinta were, and they're not here today. So, um, yeah. Well, um, feels, my suggestion. My, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I mean, my, 
Are we talking about the building a culture of welcome justice and celebration of human rights and amherst through prevention and accountability? Is that the proposal we're talking about? Correct. So what I'm looking at it right now, mm -hmm. and a lot of what is um, proposed is things that we've addressed in our bylaws. Um, so I think that we would have to You know, there's a lot of things about hold accountable, um, determined appropriate response to the data it collects. And again, I think that once the bylaws get accepted or not, that this would be a good place to go for the next steps as Rizwana and R Ronnie were talking about when we when okay. when the retreat happens. What you're saying. Yeah. Um, I also think it'd be helpful to have the DEI office fully staffed because um, this won't happen by itself. And so yes. this is not necessarily a right moment to continue to um, move forward on it. And it also requires budget. I mean, the first piece is to educate. And the only way to educate is to create some kind of training. And I suggest a webinar that, you know, that requires somebody to put together the material on what is a human rights violation and then it requires somebody to film it and that requires cost so there's just um you know i think in principle the proposal is um you know appealing <laughs> but i think before voting on it maybe it needs to be budgeted out costed out um, I'm going to wait. Is one of you can hold on a minute? Pamela has had her hand up for a while mm -hmm. and then we'll come to you. Okay. So I, I, um, my suggestion would be to, uh, take this up at your retreat because I think it requires, um, more time and community and really, um, thought and community and, you know, like planning. So if, if, for example, and of course you can vote and do whatever you so choose, but if, for example, this was the only the only item that this uh, commission was going to take up at your retreat, you could use your retreat to actually think about what your needs are and to have a strategic plan for doing it. Some of the pieces that um, require budget might be able to be accomplished through the very, and I will stress very, very minimal budget for a DEI um, at at little or no cost, depending on you know what sort of resources we have. For example, and of course I can't commit this, but you know, perhaps there's a way for Amherst Media to be involved in the taping. Or um, one of the things that I know that we have access to is um, and we had planned so many things that we had planned for this year that just did not get accomplished. Um, but um, the uh, Mass Commission Against Discrimination will come and for free provide a Know Your Rights workshop that's open to the community. So there's no cost of, involved for that. We just simply need to select a date, have them come and, um, you know, and open it up. So I think that there's ways to accomplish many of the what would be the action items and my suggestion would be to have a full discussion about um about what that might look like at your retreat because i think it's a wonderful um goal um and i i also think that um given the fact that we even at fully staff we're only an office of two <laughs> with a very limited budget um the timing of how things are structured it's gonna it's gonna take a a longer period of time to really accomplish this. Like you know, we could say yes to everything now, and it would still be months in the making just because of the structure that this group only meets once a month. There's only a department of two, and we have these other ongoing programs and activities in place. Emma, uh, so this leads me to suggest that. Sorry, Deborah. Yeah, I just was wondering about um, wise process. And I'm wondering if once um, you've hired your assistant, 
director if um, maybe we could have a meeting um, if it's if it's kosher for me to meet with you Pamela and the new person and flesh out like more of what's available like you just gave us two examples right mm -hmm. I don't know what's available but if we together could flesh out what resources are at a disposal that don't require costs or minimal costs whatever then I would be happy to take that information and craft a much more specific proposal on how we could proceed. So we wouldn't be starting from scratch with the retreat. Sure, I, I also, mm -hmm. I'm, go ahead, I'm sorry. I keep losing my thoughts. It's very hard to facilitate and to participate. Um, I also feel that there's time between now and the fall and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't think about our budget beyond the events that we ask money for. It's so, we sort of have a critical opportunity when we present the human rights report. And part of what we can say in that report is that we have been working on the bylaws. They're done. We want to move into action. And to meet our mandate of education, for instance, et cetera, et cetera, we need so much money to get started. So that's all something we can start thinking about and ensure that our budget is very human rights driven. Not that it shouldn't do the events, but basically the money we've asked for is for the events. We've never asked for money to educate people about what is a human right? Where can I go? How do I know when a right is violated? We haven't done any of that work and that, you know, so I think we have an opportunity here in the next few months to do the preparation work. So when we get to the fall, we can look at all of that more closely and to alert the town council and town manager that we're going to be looking for money to do this stuff. That's it, I'll stop, Liz. So when I rewrote the proposal and presented the proposal to the town council for the increase in our operating budget, it was an increase in operating budget. It didn't specifically say this much money is going to this and this much money is going to that. So if this proposal is part of our operating budget, then some of that money can, could, should be used if, you know, after the retreat, you have your action plan in place. Also, um, so it, it, it wasn't specific. So do not think that the money we requested, because we said if we could do all the activities of all the community um, services that we like, we would need to increase our operating budget by this much. And I do believe by requesting 15000 However, it does not start till fiscal year 2025. So That's, if you're thinking about yeah. budget, you got to think 18 months in advance. Okay. Right. Just That's so why we have to start working. <laughs> yeah. That's why we have to start working now about yes. how much we're going to ask and what we're going to ask for. Yes. Yeah. Good. So I think we can continue this discussion next time. But I also want to ask, uh, Deborah, even though it was a general statement, I thought your statement was a good one. And I would like to ask that we attach it to the next meeting agenda or announcement so that as part of that package, so that we can read through it and think a little bit before we come to the meeting and be a little bit more able to speak to it more directly and concretely in it so that's that sounds great to me and i would be great if in addition um people knew what the prompts were so like what questions one prompt is what questions do you have about this proposal and another prompt is what resources are you aware of that could be brought to bear to support this proposal? And another question is, does this proposal replicate something that's already happening that's so that, that makes that part unnecessary? And then the fourth question might be, is there something you would add that's not already in here, right? So questions, resources, um, what's uh, you know already being done and what would you add? And I don't know uh, if, I don't know, Pamela, when you send out um, agendas, if 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 you I don't remember ever getting like prompts for homework, <laughs> but that seems like a good idea so that when we get together, then at least as a person who's proposing, I'll know, oh, let's go through these four questions, yes. right? Yeah. 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 So I propose we move on. Yeah. Yeah. 
I yeah, I'm going to propose Deborah that you send some questions to Pamela simply because she doesn't have any help at this moment. And she can cut and paste that on to the attachments and it'll okay. be done. Great. Thank you. So uh, moving on, we are now on to upcoming events. Right. So the uh, first event is on Sunday. I hope uh, at least one or more of you will be at the AAPI event um, on Sunday from 11 to 2 on the town um, common and um, the schedule, I'm not sure if the schedule has been shared with you. It's being finalized. I will make a note to send that to, to everyone on the committee tomorrow, but I do have a, a, a schedule to send. Um, so, um, Basic overview, the event starts at 11. It starts with an opening from the co-chairs or whomever members of this committee, the commission that are here. The um, There will be some town council members there who will read the proclamation. There are, I believe, um, eight different performers that will be there. Uh, food is provided uh, uh, free by um, free to the public who are attending by a number of different local restaurants. And so it's a very short but well-packed um, event. I'll be here Sunday morning at nine to start setting up. I'm gonna have, as I said earlier, assistance from the uh, Crest Department, uh, Angela Mills and um, whomever else who would like to show up at, at, at nine to, uh, to, to, to set up. We are going to be on the South Common, obviously, because the North Common is under construction. Um, and um, I think the event will, I won't, I don't want to jinx myself by going, it'll, saying it'll go off without a hitch. I have to, but I think it will hopefully be well attended and that we have covered most of our bases. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, following that event, the next event that's coming up is actually three events rolled into one. So it is the Human R um, Rights Commission uh, Youth Hero Award. It is the Mill River Park Basketball Tournament and uh, the Race Amity Day. Um, that event happens on June 9th. And um, I met today with uh, members from those various organizations. Ray Harp, the rec director, is assisting me. Um, planning is going very well. There's an online form for submission to the Youth Hero Award that closes on um, Friday. Um, and I will say that we probably have about eight individual recipients who've already been nominated. Um, and the total number of nominees is probably closer to 30 because we've had two or um, student groups that have been nominated as well. So Sunrise and um, and Posh. So that's, that's going well. Um, that day, uh, I don't have the schedule. Um, as memorized in my head, but basically I know that the basketball uh, registration, which happens in person, please come if you're planning on playing basketball with your cash, um, is starts at nine, the tournament starts at 10, and then um, there will be a time for both the Youth Hero Awards and for um, Race Amity. The um, that event has a number of different sponsors who also plan to have tables there so they can talk about. Um, I think it's is it Julius Ford and Harriet Tubman Healthy Living. Um, it's the Baha'i. It's the League of Women Voters. I I'm sure that I'm missing um, on uh, the names of some of the sponsors, but they plan to table. Uh, Rec will be there, and there is a plan to have. Um, activities for younger younger kids um, while the basketball tournament is going on. Um, as with last year, there will be free food, but we will not be cooking 
Um, I just could not think about how I could purchase and arrange and cook and um, do all of that. Uh, it just was going to be way too much to try to organize that. So we are uh, we're going with food trucks and um, the 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 food will will be there um, for folks to enjoy. So so that event, I think, is, I would say, um, 75 percent planned and, and is moving along quite well. Following that, on June 13th, the town is going to have a pride celebration that will be um, a reading of the proclamation and um, flag raising on the town hall steps at 3 p.m. I know that that's early. I know that it's during the work day um, for folks, but I hope people who are interested will be able to take some time in to attend. And then following that, we will have a panel discussion with Justice Roderick Ireland. He was a member of the Supreme Judicial Court. He's now retired, um, wrote, was one of the um, authors of the Goodrich decision that created marriage equality in the Commonwealth. He's African-American and a Springfield native. Um, so he will be here to talk about his role in the Goodrich decision. And then we will have um, a panel discussion featuring um, um, a member from uh, some of the couples who were married here in Amherst on that day. So they'll have an opportunity to celebrate publicly, a little delayed, but publicly their 20th uh, wedding anniversary and talk about um, that experience and um, how that decision, the impact that it's had on their lives. And so it's really, I think it, I'm really looking forward to that event. I think it's gonna be uh, meaningful and, and moving for a number of different people and should be you know, good to have um, folks to have an opportunity to celebrate such an auspicious occasion and to do that publicly. Yep. So I rem I, I'll definitely be there and it does sound amazing. And I remember when I first heard about it, I offered to marry folks if you wanted to have a little ritual and ceremony that day, um, but it's probably too soon. It's probably, you know, not enough time to organize that to find the, a lucky couple or two. Who <laughs> yeah. Just have a free wedding. <laughs> All right. So anyone who's hearing hearing this, <laughs> if you know of a couple, right, right, I can, I can. Hey, uh, yeah. One might just roll up. On you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm saying I could, I could do this spontaneously if need be. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and we could also um, extend the offer out if you really, if you're, if you'd like. We can talk a little bit offline about extending because the the publicity has not gone out for that yet. It's so there's still an opportunity to make that offer. Well, I, I am definitely making the offer. I can't, I, I don't, I don't think I could do more than one or two. I mean, okay. I, have, I have a hard stop at 615. When does the panel go to? So the, the panel should be over at five. Fantastic. I, I'm sorry, at four. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Five. Five. And in yeah. an hour and 15 minutes, I could marry three or four couples. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. You can't figure it out. That'd be fine. Minutes. My whole yeah. ceremony took 23 minutes. Stop that. <laughs> you can get four or five and get them all done in 23 minutes. I dare you. <laughs> all right. So, all I right. Know. I've not done that before, but I think I could do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and then finally, the last event of this uh, fiscal year is Juneteenth, which happens for the town on the 15th. And that event is the most in flux. Um, so on the 15th, the Ancestral Bridges has a fairly packed schedule um, that starts um, I guess early in the morning and ends later in the evening. The only window uh, that was not planned was between 3 and 6 p.m. And the town is uh, had made an, uh, a pledge not to offer programming that would be um, 
a contradictory in time to the pro programming that's already uh, scheduled. So we have a preliminary program in place. I don't really want to talk about it publicly at this point because there's still some details to be worked out. Um, but it would take place just um, between 3 and 6 p.m. on the 15th. On the 19th, which is the actual holiday, that Wednesday, the date, um, there will be program by the BBAA, the Black the Black Better Business, Black Association. Business Association. Association. Yeah, and their programming, I'm not sure of the time of the time, um, is going to be at Mill River. So, what what is the date of the Black Business Association? On Juneteenth, on the nineteenth, yeah. on the nineteenth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I my goal is to be still standing on June 16th. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm starting to think my goal is to be away on vacation. Because <laughs> it just seems like so much. Yeah. Uh, but all good things, I'm sure. I do believe that uh, for if anyone hasn't been to the Youth Hero Day, uh, Camille especially, it's... It was to me the way, it's the most amazing way to see all of Amherst. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not all of Amherst, because I'm finding more corners of it now that I've been entering my third year in Amherst, but it really was absolutely amazing. And I think I made hundreds of hamburgers with these two big guys. <laughs> made fun of the way I was flipping my burgers, but they, but I gained their respect by the end of it. <laughs> So there's a lot of um, unusual interaction. People, I mean, it's just people you're not seeing every day because everybody goes and there's a very nice energy. So I really encourage everyone to also invite your friends to come to that. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun day. So I will say that um, I, I know that uh, there will be crass responders um, assisting me at all of these events and um, um, and I'm sure Camille, I haven't checked with her personally, but I um, will definitely make sure that she yeah. knows um, about the uh, the Youth Hero Awards and the Mill River Basketball Tournament so that she can attend. Um, she has attended quite a few events with um, the Crest Responders already. I know that um, the responders were working with REC on uh, a youth empowerment program, RISE, that came to a close two weeks ago and she was at the um, final ceremony for that. So she's she has definitely been making the rounds. Um, I can, um, al along the lines of meeting with her individually, she has someone assisting her with scheduling. So I can ask her um, to send her calendar uh, program to each of you uh, if you'd like to schedule a time to meet with her. Yeah. She's been very busy, as you might imagine. Yeah. Right. All right. So if there are any members of the public still here, um, the floor is yours. Are there any public comments at this time? So you do have two attendees, but no one has indicated um, a desire for public comment. Well, in that case, our next meeting will be the third uh, Wednesday in June, which is June 19th. Um, mm. That is Juneteenth. <laughs> yes, uh, I know so what I said it on the Wednesday or Thursday. Or Should it Tuesday be a different Thursday. day? I suggest we yeah. meet either Tuesday or Thursday as opposed to Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesday. So shall we say June 18th or after June 18th? June 18th? 18th. Okay. So the next meeting will be on June 18th. And oh, I and hope can we are... verify? Is it 6 or 6.30? Because I thought we moved to 6. 6.30. 6.30 to 8 All right. is our meeting time. If we move it to 6, that's we not had... an issue. It's just we our meeting did. time. We had two meetings at we 6. did. Yeah. So what's the preference? Is it 6 or 6.30? We need to be clear. What I remember is that we like had... You said... 
sorry, what I remember is that we had a meeting off cycle because we had to reschedule it and it ended up at six. And I asked, cause I'm an early to bed, early to rise kind of person. If this six o'clock time works, can we make it our regular time? And the very next meeting we had that was our regularly scheduled Wednesday meeting was at six. I'm not gonna, you know, so I will suggest six because I think we discussed it and we all agreed that we could do six and six was some thought better. So shall we do, so the next meeting will be June 18th at 6 p.m. Yeah, okay. Um, I agree. So that means, Pamela, you have to post on Friday before. Right. On the 14th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're getting to the end of our agenda. Are there any other topics that the chair did? Oh, are there any other topics C. that anyone else would like to bring out? Yes. Pick Liz. me. Liz. So um, this is not going to come to a surprise for Ronnie and Pamela because I've already had a discussion with them. Um, this is my second term. I agreed to my second term for one year or uh, till Philip decided to leave. And Philip left in July and I'm still here. Um, so next month, well, maybe not next month, I am meeting with, going to meet with Paul. I know that Paul is in the process of filling holes in some of the committees, including this one, in the CSSJC. So I need to meet with him and discuss my exit. Um, when I re-upped, I said I would give it at least a year. The year was coming up. I am really busy with my six grandkids. It was perpetuated this year because my son got injured, um, breaking up a fight at the middle at the high school. So I've been trying to hold him dear and near. I have some personal stuff going on. And as the commission knows, I am a frequent traveler um, for USATF, United States of America Track and Field. Um, I'm, and now I am on at least one of their committees. They're trying to get me on another one. And so um, I think, and I gave them a, what is it, 80-20? And as I've been thinking about it, it's more like 90-10 that I will not be here on this committee next year. It has been a ride. Um, and I think that given that there's already um, movement going forward to fill the other positions that we have missing, this would be the appropriate time to bow out. I will not leave you um, down a commissioner until uh, uh, the end of September if it's not filled, but at the end of September, I will be stepping off. So I needed to say that to you. I needed to say that publicly. I need to, I hope Paul is not listening because I haven't told him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Ronnie and Pamela had this conversation, so they knew it was coming at 80 20, but now it's more like 90 10. That um, I'm getting really, really busy. And I'm getting a little older. I know some a couple of y'all might be older than me, maybe not, but I'll be 65 in, in July. So it's time to start slowing it down a little bit and enjoying um, other aspects of my life more. Um, I will, would love to stay informed of all of our events. Um, I will be working with Ronnie and Pamela uh, for our um, season ending um report to the town council. And if no one else is going to do it, I will be able to defend the, that um, that charter to the town council. I think we do that in October, maybe November. I don't remember which day, which month. But anyway, thank you all for um, a lot of good work. And one of the, the things that I most admire about the folks that are sitting in this committee um, is that even when we agree to disagree, we do it respectfully 
And um, because we come from different places and we come from different eras and some of our outlooks are different, but we are always there for the good of everybody. And I so appreciate that in all of you. There, I'm done. Thank you for sharing that. We'll be very sorry to lose you, but I have a feeling we'll have more time to tell you that in different ways. <laughs> well, she just mentioned two activities too that I will not be there. You're here. You I'm are not awesome. leaving us yet, so we'll deal with it when the time comes. Aye, aye. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for being with us for now and for the foreseeable future. And thank you, everyone else for coming today. I really feel like it's been a big, big breakthrough to get the, these bylaws through. I know mm -hmm. they're bureaucracy, but this was in process since before I joined. And I think I've been on this commission for a year at least. So we really, I feel like we've really moved forward and we've done our part and now we've got our agenda, we've got our framework and we start working. Start so I also want to shout Thank out, you, I hope Tyler is listening, but he was very, very instrumental with Philip and then Roddy Thank when she you. came on for taking a stab at the bylaws and revising it. So um, I just need to publicly thank him. I pray he's listening, but if he's not, it's in the record and he can look at it if he'd like. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, okay, everyone. Thank you. And so it is now 7.47, and the meeting is officially closed. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have Bye. a good day. Stay safe out there.